So, well, our first guest today is Catherine. No, sorry, Julie Philibaum. Yeah, okay. This is this is not as easy as it looks. Um, who is the uh, the council member for Charlestown? Is that right? That's correct. All right. Welcome to the program. Tell us something about you. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. Uh, something about me. Um, well, I could start off with I moved to Charlestown just in 2017, but fell in love with the town and the community and saw some things that needed fixed, started fixing them and then decided to run for city council because what else was I going to do? <laughs> what was the first trigger? The first thing you wanted to fix? Um, I saw a lot of homeless which I had lived in Pittsburgh for over a decade. I was used to seeing that, but not in a small town. That seemed unusual for me. So I wanted to do something about that, help them out in any way that I could. I started volunteering with the Jefferson County Community Ministries and decided to do something that involved the artistic and uh, fiber artist in me and did a yarn bombing of the trees of Charlestown uh, to solicit donations to Jefferson County Community Ministries. Yard bombing? Yarn bombing. Is that what I used to call TPing when I was <laughs> in high school? <laughs> yeah, well, this is much more, uh, you know, creative, artistic, and planned. I've, uh, we have up to 20 volunteers every year that help out with this, and we do up to 30 trees. What is your background, Julie? Um, I have a degree in animation, okay. but uh, did not really pursue that. But I do still have the artistic flair in me, for sure. <laughs> what did you discover to be the source of the homelessness? I mean, why was there such a high level of homelessness? Was this during, during COVID and, and all of that? Or it I mean, it was before. I, I don't think COVID, um, you know, obviously was not playing into it at that time. I think this was more of a... Um, probably the opioid epidemic and uh, I think just having the community ministries there and they're a lovely group of people that do a, a lot for the community um, that's obviously gonna uh, increase the population of homelessness there so it's a it's a regional services. problem how much of a pro how much integration do we have between the counties in the eastern panhandle did you work closely with berkeley county or was your work primarily in jefferson county yeah just in jefferson county mm -hmm. but i do know that um if the shelters fill up in one area they will bring them to where they have space uh so i think that's yeah. part of it too it seems to be a frequent thing to happen in this area every election season it seems like there are newcomers to the area who are go right to the ballot, which is not a criticism at all. Actually, it's kind of it's endearing. But is it, what was the what was the nexus to go from? Wow, well, okay, I'm coming back to my roots a little bit closer. Hey, let's go run for office and give up most a lot of my day to political stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I definitely uh, enjoyed politics before. Um, even in high school, that was and I definitely uh, something that I was really interested in. Before. But uh, as I, <laughs> I don't, uh, it's okay. It's harder than it looks. <laughs> um, and uh, once I moved, I think once I started having children of my own, I realized that you know if you're not going to get involved, someone's going to make decisions for you. You got to kind of step up. And then moving to Charlestown, it there were just a lot of opportunities where I could step up and start serving the community. Um, and then I joined the tree board, joined the board of parks and recreation. And it just seemed like, and that was just local to Charlestown. And it just seemed like the next logical step was to run for city council. You know, you're making a good point, John. And this is this area is unique, I think, in that regard. I've had the opportunity to live in a lot of areas, and so many areas are closed. And you have to live there for many, many years before you can be accepted. But the Eastern Panhandle provides an, an opportunity for people to come in, to get involved, and run for office. Kevin Knowles is an example. I was an example. Uh, Dan Duye, you can name a lot of folks that are not native to the Eastern Panhandle came in and became involved and in short order they were they ran for and fortunate enough holding office yeah i think on charlestown city council there's only one member who was actually born in west yeah. virginia everyone else is from outside of the area mm -hmm. but came to the area fell in love with it wants to make it better and been willing to be accepted by the by the folks mm -hmm. here 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Does that speak to a, a, a kind of apathy, do you think, of the folks who have here, lived here for a no, long time? No, I, I don't, not at all. I think just the opposite. I think it's the, uh, uh, they, they're willing to accept, they're willing to, to work with a broad range of people. I think it's just the opposite of apathy. But we hear a lot from people we've heard in this station, from, from people who are, uh, change, change is not always welcome. And when when you you have people who are new to an area from a different area, and then they they start to change it to reflect the area from which they came, that is a source of friction. Again, not a criticism. I just think it's interesting. This is not the way. Having come from Northern Virginia, Fairfax, you know, the, that's people are entrenched in Fairfax when they get into politics. And that's the point I was trying to make. I did. I've not observed that in the Eastern Panhandle. Yeah. So you had you you made the news during the last uh, election cycle and the run up to it for uh, favoring the legalization of marijuana in Charlestown. Well, technically, in just Charlestown, it would be de- decriminalization. We What's cannot, the difference? Sure, we cannot legalize it because the state has not legalized it, and. Um, According to state law, 811.1, we cannot, a municipality cannot pass anything that would be contrary to state law. So this would not be contrary. It would just be no jail time, no fines or fees. But it would still be illegal. You would still have a misdemeanor on your record. And it would require a referendum for that to pass, correct? No, I mean, it would just require an update to our current ordinance. Our current ordinance that was passed about 20 years ago, I think in the early 2000s, um, that in regards to simple possession of marijuana, does not have any jail time attached to it. It's only up to a $1,000 fee, and that's what the state law says, up to a $1,000 fee, no more than $1,000. So $0.00 is no more than $1,000. So that's why it's not contrary to state law. If the state had said at least $100, then $100 would be the lowest we could go. But since it only says no more than 1000 we can still do a zero. But is this action going to be taken by the council themselves, or does it have to go to the voters? This could just go through council itself. And it did come up a few months ago. Um, we could not come to an agreement, unfortunately, and we did not adopt any changes to the current ordinance. Um, but I do think that with what has recently come into law in Maryland, we may be bringing this topic back up again um, since it's recreationally legal there. Recreationally legal defined as what? For adult use, I believe it's 21 and over, and you can, they, they have converted all of their medicinal dispensaries to just regular recreational dispensaries. I think in the first weekend, last weekend, not this past weekend, the weekend before, uh, it was like $10 million worth of sales. So it's, I, I feel like for West Virginia, we are just leaving money on the table. There's a lot of tax dollars that could be collected there. And if we had done this 10 years ago, being one of the first states to have legalized it, we would have been getting a lot of tourism dollars as well, because I think that's what happened in Colorado. Now, for clarification, in West Virginia, medicinal marijuana is legal. Correct. Recreational marijuana is not legal. Correct. Mm -hmm. One could ask, is that the kind of tourism that we want? I mean, people come in and just kind of get high and hang out on the streets and, uh, and, then, and then go home? Well, I certainly am not advocating for public intoxication, driving while intoxicated, or uh, t- intoxication of, of minors in, in any way. Um, but I do think that this could be an industry that would help West Virginia in, in a state that is certainly losing residents. Um, I think this could help. That seems to run counter to the the overarching scourge of drug addiction in in the county or in the in the state of West Virginia. The opioid epidemic that's going on it isn't aren't, isn't having legalizing marijuana out of balance with trying to solve the the drug issues within the state. I think it would actually help. Um, marijuana is not addicting. <laughs> And it, there's a lot of misconception. I think there's the old lie that it is a gateway drug. It is not. Um, and I think that a lot of people who are trying to fight their opioid addiction have 
found a lot of success with uh, cannabis and, and marijuana products in getting away from these harder drugs that are absolutely wrecking people's bodies and lives to something that helps them with the whatever that desire is that they need to to get that euphoric feeling without all the destruction behind it. You said it did not pass. Uh, out of the number of council folks you have mm -hmm. in Charlestown, how many supported it, how many did not support it? Well, that was the most frustrating part okay. of it. Um, we, we had the votes for it to pass. Uh, the problem was that our chief of police had said that he would do what was done in Morgantown. Morgantown decriminalized it to a $15 fee. We had also, that was, someone had made that motion to change it to a $10 fee in Charlestown. But um, the in Morgantown, they have just stopped enforcing the municipal ordinance and only enforce it at the state law, which is something that none of our council members wanted because that it that is an absolute at least one night in jail if not three if they get picked up on a friday night they're probably not going to see be seen until monday so we definitely did not want that for our residents or for our visitors we did not feel like that was the good a good thing that hey if you come 15 minutes from maryland where you legally yeah. purchased your marijuana and you get stopped in charlestown then you're going to spend up to three nights in jail that's not something that any of us wanted um so it, it came down to what will our our police force enforce um and so that's i think where the <laughs> the uh um discussion kind of fell apart unfortunately so you're saying that if the if the city council had had uh decriminalized and the chief of police decided he did not want to enforce it he had that prerogative well he would just enforce it at the state level um because they all take all of the police, when they are sworn in to their office, they uh, take the oath of, of being a police officer, and that is that they would uphold the municipal charter and ordinances as well as the state constitution and the state laws and federal as well. So they can't, if they decide that they want to enforce something at the federal level, they could do that as well. Um, and I think that's... Um, you know, I have some issues there, but... <laughs> yeah, but you, and, you, and you've confused me. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, what you're proposing, what you had proposed, was not inconsistent with the state. Correct. It was just an extension of what the state had done. It, right. It was just saying, you know, the state law says up to $1,000, yeah. up to 90 days in jail. And so we had already changed it to zero nights in jail um but still up to a thousand dollars and we i was pushing to get it down to zero dollars it's still a misdemeanor it's still going to show up on your uh record they are still going to confiscate what you have on your person and i feel like that is enough of a punishment in itself <laughs> so. no so if this had passed and someone is is taking advantage of, of the, the sanctuary city of, of Charlestown to, to smoke their marijuana or do whatever, then they cross into Jefferson County. It's hard to go from place to place without, sure. so you're going to leave. Now, would they have been in violation of Jefferson County ordinances? Is Correct. It, yeah. It seems to be a very difficult thing to, just the logistics of it seem very difficult. Yeah, it, it's certainly not easy, um, but I do think it's the right thing to do. And I'm hoping that perhaps if more municipalities, if the county decides to also do this, if they see that the whole world does not go up in smoke, um, that they might be interested in, in also adopting similar things to increase tourism to the area. Um, because I do feel like this could potentially decrease tourism if people think, oh, I'm gonna get busted with my legally purchased weed from 15 minutes away in Maryland or Virginia. Um, but really, it's the same thing that exists if um, this is a constitutional carry state for firearms. Mm -hmm. And if you cross the Potomac, the, your, your legally carried firearm makes you a felon right. if you cross into Maryland. So that having different laws in different states is, is not unusual. In fact, that's sure. kind of the structure of, of the nation. Yes. Yeah. Have, you, have you spoken to your state senator about this? I'm thinking about uh, Jason Barrett. 
No, I have not. Because Jason was very involved in legalizing marijuana for medicinal purposes. Mm -hmm. I have no idea his position on recreational marijuana. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I have not yeah. spoken to him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you stated very dogmatically that marijuana is not a gateway drug. Mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Um, I'm actually a child of the 70s who has never tried marijuana, so that's, that's not, not even being judgmental in that. But I'm going to guess I could line up 25 doctors who say that it is not a gateway drug, and I can get 25 doctors to say absolutely it is a gateway drug. No, I don't think so. And have you, you've done the research? Yes. Okay. And, and so let's go the other way. Why do you think there's such unity at the political level against marijuana? I mean, it continues to be a federal crime, for example. Sure. Um, well, for the same reasons that I think we should decriminalize it, I think are the same reasons why someone would want to keep it illegal. Uh, money. It all comes down to money, doesn't it? I'm trying to increase tourism dollars. I'm trying to spend the money that are the, li are the limits that our police force have on more serious and violent, dangerous crimes. And uh, I think... That's what it all comes down to. Where's the money coming from? Let me go back to the point that John was asking a second ago about the, the medical uh, research on whether or not marijuana is a gateway drug mm -hmm. or not. What, how much research has been done and at what level has the research? You, obviously, you've not done the research yourself, but you've pursued or you've looked at the research. Sure. I mean, if you... Everyone's got a, you know, a smartphone in their pocket. Anyone can Google this. Uh, but there have been several studies done, even back as far as the 70s, um, in areas where they were starting to decriminalize it, where they were starting to take away, lower the fines, take away the jail time. Um, and there has been no, you know, increase of use in areas where it's been decriminalized versus areas where it's still criminalized. In fact, I think there's actually an increase of use where it's it's more, where the fines and fees are higher, which is interesting. Um, and the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics also supports decriminalization. They do not support use of, by minors um, recreationally. They, they obviously see how that affects their growing brains and bodies and everything, but they see that the the time that would be spent in jail or the heavy fines and fees as more detrimental to their health than enjoying. <laughs> what do we have jails filled with people that have been caught smoking pot? Is that is that really a thing? Um, I mean, I don't know if it's that large of an issue, uh, but there are certainly a lot of people who who are serving time for this. See, I just, I have, I've, we all know people, or I, certainly I know people who, um, you, know, you call them potheads. You know, they get up in the morning, they start token, and they, and mm -hmm. they do whatever they do. But, it, but it, to me, that feels like they're addicted that they, they have to have it. And I don't know, again, not a doctor, I don't know where where uh, dependence becomes addiction, mm -hmm. but it also seems contra uh, contradictory to me that if the uh, pediatric society is in favor of decriminalization, yet opposed to use, mm -hmm. that uh, that's just kind of a weird mixed message. Well, like I said, it's just, they see that the consequences of being picked up for the charges are far more detrimental to their health than just um, choking. You know, <laughs> um, it's, uh, again, I'm not advocating for that at all mm -hmm. of, of use by minors. I think 21 and over is a great um, law to have. Um, and I think that this is something that West Virginia should, should be exploring. Where, uh, where does Charlestown, or where do you propose to go next on this? You're going to push again and uh, see if you can get some understanding with the chief of police, or what do you plan to do? Yeah, I think getting an understanding with the chief of police is definitely what we would need to do before I would 
try to push it again. Um, but it is unfortunate uh, with the new laws in Maryland. That was definitely where we were aiming to time it up perfectly. Um, so, you know, it's no, nothing ever goes according to plan. Right. <laughs> well, the political landscape of Maryland is shifting in a way that could be not possibly be more diametrically opposed to the shift that's happening in West Virginia, <laughs> right? It's just getting wider and wider and wider. So I think that that Maybe Northern is Virginia. I'm sorry? Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia. Yeah. I said Virginia. I meant yeah. West Virginia. What's yeah. the, the split yeah. that's happening in, yeah. in uh, mm -hmm. uh, the West Virginia is becoming more and more conservative, it seems, at least and, writ large. And Northern Virginia becoming more liberal, but the Southern Virginia is yes. pretty much in step with West Virginia. Right. So... <laughs> is is does the drumbeat continue? Are you are you? Is, can this conceivably come up every council meeting in the future, or is it is there a season for this? I think it could, but I I wouldn't want to push it until I knew I had all my ducks in a row. Um, you know, learn my mistake from the last time, certainly. Uh, so I think it, it might be some time before it comes back up again, unless. We see a huge spike of people from Maryland and Virginia visiting Charlestown, which, of course, we want them to visit Charlestown. Mm -hmm. We want people from the DMV area to come and, and spend time in our beautiful downtown, historically hip Charlestown. And spend um, money. Of course, of course. We've got a car show coming up yeah. Labor Day weekend. Yeah. We want people to come. Uh, and we don't want them to to forget that, oh, yeah, 15 minutes away. And I understand what you're talking about mm -hmm. over state, you know, from one state to the another. The laws are going to change drastically. But I feel like for something like this, if they're not, if it's just in their pocket, if it's just in their their car, they're not actively, you know, intoxicated, I you know, I don't see that there's any reason to to be busting people for a simple possession. I thank you so much for coming in today on such short notice and and talking about stuff we don't often talk about here. So thank you very much. <laughs>